Uh, welcome, you guys. Uh, so you just watched table embroidery, um, which uh, which is something that Stone is working on right now, um, as she's experienced in. Uh, what I'm working on, though, is a different type of embroidery. Um, I have been working on some extra pieces for my bubblegum outfit, and um, you may have seen me do this live before because this is unfortunately a thing that I've just been like continuously doing for months and months. Um, not because it's taking months and months, but because I just keep putting it down, picking it back up. But like, that is still what I am working on right now. Um, so today we're gonna follow along with this project some more um, and talk about gold work. Um, so with gold work, this is something that I had been wanting to do for a long time, to be honest. Uh, but I was always kind of a little bit intimidated. Um, gold work is working essentially with, um, with metal, with metal threads, um, different types of, of metal that goes into the embroidery. Um, and contrary to the name, it is not necessarily gold. This is not gold, I am not that rich, um, but anything involving that type of metal technique is gonna be labeled under gold work, even though you know, this is made of something else, it's not quite as expensive. Um, but I didn't get into it because I didn't have the right project for it and I was concerned that it was gonna be really difficult. Um, I don't have great hand hand sewing technique, uh, and so I was very concerned about it. But if you like beadwork, or you like uh, chain stitching, or any kind of embroidery, you will probably actually like this a lot. I really enjoy it way more than I thought I would. Um, these little pieces did not really take that long to do. Uh, and, and part of that is I was actually smart for once. Um, for a beginner project, what I did is I began um, not with a shape that was going to require nothing but these metal threads filled in, which is, I, I think that is often why it can take so long. Um, same thing with filling in a whole shape with beads. That, that's a very time consuming process just because the amount of work that goes into it. Um, but for this, what I actually did is I started with a base layer of something else. So this is some machine embroidery um, a pattern that I made. Um, and this is what I began with for these pieces. And so in this case, I don't have to completely fill in um, my pattern with cut work, which would take me hours and hours and hours and hours. Instead, I'm using the metallic threads as an accent here. Uh, so if we kind of compare the two, the, the one that I've not yet started with my finished one. Actually, I think these are the reverse, but here we go. So if we compare these two, we've got some fill right here, and then we've got an accent right here kind of emphasizing the difference between these colors and the edges and that kind of thing. And it's not a humongous difference, but I think it looks really cool, especially the change in texture and in person when you're not looking through a webcam, it does have like quite a noticeable shine and color difference to it. Um, and I, I think it's just a really, really cool accent. Um, so that's what I am working on right now. There's a lot of, of different uh, techniques um, encompassed under, under Gold World. Actually, Scott, can you bring me the book? If you know where it is, the Gold Work one? Um, like I said, I am a beginner. I have, this is my first, this is my very first project, but I was very surprised with how straightforward it was um, and how uh, user-friendly it is if you, you know, put a little bit of work into um, learning the technique, watching people on YouTube. And also I bought this book that I thought was very, very helpful. Um, so if you are wanting to get into gold work, uh, this is Gold Work by Hazel Everett. I think I got this just, uh, it's online. It's like in a lot of places, um, but this, is really great, um, especially where it helped me was understanding the different uh, types of metallic threads. So like here, we can kind of see here, there's a shit ton of them. I don't have all of these, I have two. Um, but there's all kinds of different threads that you can use and combine uh, into your project. And I, I think combining at least two, if not more, um, will really help it pop. In this case, I already have a different texture in here, so I don't think it was quite as necessary. But like, here's an example. If you want to go just absolutely hog ass crazy and do just like a, a pure gold work project, uh, God bless you, first of all. 
Um, second of all, you can see this guy here does not have just one type of metal thread. Um, you know, we've got all these like different sizes and different textures of thread. Um, so together, it's something that um, has some texture to it. It's not super flat, super uniform. Um, because even though you're working with metal, it's kind of the same thing where if you were to say use just one type of bead or one um, color of embroidery floss, it's gonna, it's gonna be a little bit boring no matter how much work you put into the thing. Um, so definitely pick up this book or something similar if you can. Um, but for me, again, I'm a beginner. So what I wanted to do was start easy. Um, so for bubble gum, there's not a whole lot to put in here. And so what I'm working with today is um, these little pieces right here. This is a technique called chip work. And essentially we're just filling in large gaps with, it, it almost looks like little beads, really shiny little beads. Um, and what it is, is this metal thread begins life as a very tightly curled, wire. So like if I stretch this, boop, 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 really springy, you can damage this really easily. Um, and I've damaged a bunch of it, unfortunately. Uh, fortunately, this is why I'm not working with gold, because that would be a very expensive mistake. Um, but it's really tightly curved. And so when you cut this guy, it's only chip work. All right, whatever, I'll just make a new chip work. When we cut it into small little bead-like pieces, this is what we end up with. Just this tiny little chip. And then together, it creates this nice fill area. Um, I actually added a little bit more of a pop to this. This is two different colors. This is both my gold combined with the pink. Again, combining things is a really great way um, to really up the interest of your piece IP, I think. Uh, this is called Bright Check. This is, this is the type of, um, of metal thread that you generally want to use for chip work, although you can use other stuff as well. The other type of thread I'm using is what we see right here. Um, and it almost looks like a string of really small beads. Uh, but again, it's not. It's a metal thread. And this is called Pearl Pearl. And I really like this. Um, this is, again, a metal wire, kind of a little bit coiled so that we could stretch it. I, again, I don't want to break it. Uh, or overstretch it. Um, you can, that's, that is a technique you can do. You can overstretch it so that it becomes like really kind of kinked and swirled and that's an interesting look, but that's not what I want for this. Um, and let me, let me actually get my other one. It's just very slightly bigger. Again, multiple colors, more interest. You look really close. The way that it's curved, it almost looks like a little string of beads or a little string of pearls, which is why it's called pearl pearl. Um, the other, another type of really popular uh, thread is the, um, the smooth, the, the, the smooth pearl kind, or um, yeah, I think, I think that's what it's called. Uh, I am not using that here just because I didn't really see a place for it on this, but there, there's just lots of fun stuff. There's like Grecian twist if you want something really, um, let's see, here we go. Ah, yeah, here we go. Here's actually a photo for you guys. So. Bright check, that's what we're using for the chip work. Wire check, I'm not using that. That, that looks a little um, rougher. And then the uh, smooth pearl, that's what it's called. Um, this is very smooth. You see this quite a lot. Um, I just did not really have a use for it. This is really common in cut work. So something where, let's say I wanted to fill this area, not with thread, but with gold wire. A lot of times with the cut work, you'll lay your smooth wire, almost like, like this satin stitch, like here, 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 all the way down. And that takes a long time. And I decided that as a beginner, that is not for me. Let's not do that. 
Um, instead, I stuck with two uh, relatively straightforward, simple pieces. Um, and I'm really happy with the way that this has been going. Um, one other thing with, uh, with gold work is there's some additional supplies that you want. Uh, one is um, you want to be using beeswax or if you don't have beeswax, like soap would probably work okay, but honestly, this is so darn cheap and very readily accessible. Um, I would grab this. Uh, you want to coat your wire in this. It helps it not tear against the, the metal threads, especially, especially um, the, the chip work. Uh, when you cut it, you might have some rough edges and you know if you're rubbing your thread against it, then it could break um, and that would be terrible. Uh, so the beeswax helps, um, uh, helps it slide against the metal a little better and also helps your thread not tangle quite as much. I've actually just started using this every time I, I hand sew, to be honest, uh, but definitely grab some of that. Use a strong thread. I like Guterman um, cotton, something like that. Uh, and then you also need a hoop of some kind um, to hoop your embroidery, like always. So in theory, I would want to use the one that Scone was using, if anyone watched the panel just before mine, which is a nice tambour table. It's got legs. Um, it's stretched really nicely. She went over all of that stuff. Um, however, there's only one of those, and so I have been uh, banished to the uh, not so great hoop, which is the one that I have in my hands. Uh, this is just a cheap, I don't know where we got this. I, I have no idea where this came from. Like Amazon? Okay, apparently it's 12 bucks on Amazon. It's just like PVC put together. You can get much nicer versions of this. To be honest, I wish this had legs. That's the, that's the one thing. I always have to hold it kind of a little strangely. Um, but like her hoop, um, you can essentially sew through the fabric, loop it around here so that you can get a nice even stretch um, to, to your fabric. Uh, I, I am using polyester, which in an ideal world, you want to use silk or um, cotton or something stronger um, just because it's, it's a lot stronger, metal is heavy, um, this is a lot of stress, but for me, I really needed the poly because I'm burning the edges. I wanted this to be um, a very clean applique. I did not want any of that organza edging showing. I was not going to stitch it down. I am not that patient. Um, so this is a piece of organza. Um, but to help with the tension, there's um, some cotton twill all around it. Um, and that helps even it out a little bit. I haven't had problems with this. And to be honest, if it, if it works, it's not really, for this project specifically, it is not a big deal um, because I'm burning all this away, so who cares? And then second of all, this part is not going to warp. This is solid satin stitching. There's no way the inside of my shape is going to get deformed. Um, but if you were, say, like I, at one point, I am going to be stitching directly onto my Dupiani. And in that case, I need to be careful and not warp my fabric. Uh, anyway, so for my never ending continuous project, I'm gonna put this up on my fakey legs. Now y'all can kind of see what I'm doing here. Perfect. All right, so I have been working on this for a little bit. The park that I am into right now is the chip work, um, which let me actually flip this around. So I'm, I'm starting the fill right here, and this is about as far as I've gotten. Um, you don't necessarily have to have this kind of base layer that I, I've put here. Um, this is just something that we thought um, would lend it a little bit of strength. You know, again, the, the polyester isn't great. Um, might be a little prone to tearing, and especially like when we go to burn the fabric away, uh, having a little bit of stitching underneath, uh, we, we thought would make it a little more um, secure and strong. Uh, and also it's a nice guide for me to be frank. 
Um, I don't have to mark on this at all. Uh, so it's been, it's again, been very nice for a beginner's project. I do not have enough chip work though. So let's continue making more of this stuff. Now I have a bad habit of stretching my check pearl a little too much, unfortunately. Um, so try to be careful with this, unlike me. And then you want to cut even pieces. Um, I'd say, it's hard to say, how big is this? Like, like two millimeters, three millimeters? Um, if you cut them really, really big, they're going to look a little fat and wonky. What's up? Oh, I don't know where he went. Uh, and too small, uh, you can do them smaller, it's just, you're just gonna create more work for yourself. But I usually cut a whole bunch into here, and then I have a bunch to choose from. Some people put them onto a velvet pillow. Uh, <laughs> that's very fancy, it's too fancy for me, um, but it makes it easier to pick up. Also, if you are working with actual gold, um, I can see why you would want to be a lot gentler with your materials. Uh, for me though, I am not ready for that point in my life. Um, instead, this is all uh, imitation. Uh, and the nice thing about the imitation is it comes in lots of crazy colors. So like for instance, look at all this pink. This is a uh, pink bright check. So that's a fun option. And then I have a little bit of rose gold as well, just a tiny bit thrown in there. But uh, so that, that's a fun option. And also it, it definitely makes it a lot more cost friendly in my opinion. By the way, if you guys have questions or if you're working on your own projects, please let me know uh, because the majority of this is just me working on my never ending embroidery. So yeah, anyone, uh, anyone have any questions? You know, it, it, it surprisingly does not look like candy for me. The true, the true forbidden snack um, of this costume is my act made of candy, real, real candy. Um, <laughs> because I was like, well, I could spend a significant portion of my life molding all of these things and sculpting them, or I can just buy some candy and then coat them all in resin and wear it on my head. Um, so I, I did that and like step one with the candy crown is to coat it all in a, in a clear coat acrylic so that um, it helps protect it from the resin uh, to prevent like yellowing. And so I went to the store and like bought all this candy and I come home and I immediately just eat like an absolute stupid amount of candy. Um, and then I'm like, well, I have to stop eating this because I need to put it on my crown. So then I take it downstairs and I spray it all with like a Krylon clear coat and then I bring it upstairs. But then the whole time I'm just like, mm, I want to eat more of this candy, but it's covered in poison. Mm. And then once it was covered in resin, it was okay because it was obvious I couldn't eat it any longer. But like that middle step of like candy that looks good, but covered in poison, very dangerous. Oh, what did this do? Oh, jeez. All right. All right. Well, okay, cool. Well, all right. We have a great example of what not to do. So all my stuff just got crazy tangled. Uh, and I just completely destroyed this piece of pearl um, and a string hold on it. And this is what happens. So this is what happens when you pull too hard on your metal threads. You overstretch them. But now we can kind of see what it is, which is uh, literally just a piece of wire that's been wrapped really, really tightly. Lit. And it's a similar situation with the pearl pearl. If you stretch it really, really far, it's going to turn into this kind of shape, um, which is kind of cool. Like if you overstretch it and you want this kind of like loop-de-loop-de -loop -de shape, um, that's, an, that's an interesting option, but make sure you want it before you do that because you cannot put it back. There is no saving that piece.
Uh, where do I suggest buying my gold work threads from? Um, uh, actually, I don't know if Birdie's in here, um, but I know Birdie has like a ton of stores. Um, I purchased mine um, from a particular Etsy seller because I really liked the pink color that she offered. Um, but there, there are some really good, well-known stores, especially if you're looking for the actual gold work. Um, let me see, is Birdie in here? If if not, message me on on Instagram or something, and I'll I'll just send you the the stores directly. Um, but there there's several like very well known ones. Um, I think actually some of them are not shipping right now, unfortunately. Um, but if you're just looking for imitation, uh, you can you can get some really good stuff at a good price. But for gold, I think there's, there's I would definitely go with some of the more trusted places. Yeah, yep. Yeah, there we go. Uh, Garibaldi is is definitely one of them. I was looking, I was looking at them. Um, for imitation, it was a little pricey. And also I need pink. I need that pink. Uh, so running this thread through beeswax a little bit. And for the check work, I double it up. Um, the check work, the the check work is really tough on the on the thread. Um, you know, again, it's metal and sliding a piece of thread against metal is probably not great. Um, so just for a little bit of extra security, I like to double it up. Uh, so we've seen some people overstretch them to look like tiny vines. Yeah, those look really, really cool. That, that dragonfly um, picture uh, used some overstretched thread as well for like the outline of the wings. It was, yeah, I think it looks really, really neat. So let's just get started. I'm just gonna knot this off. Okay. See that? Is that in focus enough? I think it is. All right. So usually for the check work, um, I will bring the needle up fairly close to where my last piece was, or if you're starting at the very beginning. Um, because the check piece, let's see what color do we want, gold. It's going to start right there. I'm just gonna slide this onto the needle. If you are more coordinated than me, you can just pick it up with the needle off of your velvet pillow. I've tried that, I'm bad at it. So I just shove it on the needle with my other hand. You know, like I'm not going to sweat it. I'm not going to just lose all my pieces because I do not have that level of uh, coordination. Um, and then basically decide where you want this to lay. God, I wish this focused a teeny weeny bit more. Come here. It's just so much shiny. It just doesn't want to focus. All right. So with this, you don't want it all laying in the same direction. So if I were, were to have every single piece of the chip work all pointing like this in parallel lines, that's going to look really boring. Um, instead, all of these pieces are arranged in different directions, kind of haphazardly, um, with no rhyme or reason. Ah, yes, focus, yes. Um, with no rhyme or reason, um, and that's part of what makes this so hard for your like eye to really focus on it just gives it a lot of visual interest and it also they all pieces also shine in different directions when the light catches them um, so for this one i'm going to lay it in a different direction from this piece which is laying from here to here so i want it to lay right here and so then i'm going to push my needle down at where i want the top to to end There we go. 
There we go. And then for my next piece, begin the needle up where I want my piece to start. And I'll grab one of my pieces, shove it on here. And then my needle's gonna go down where the top is going to end. Uh, there's a tool actually that you can buy um, to help. You see how I'm, I'm like holding this loop here? Uh, that's so that it doesn't get tangled. Um, I don't do that all the time, but sometimes, um, especially if, if you're near other pieces, it can get a little tangly. Um, so it just helps me make sure that the thread stays straight. And honestly, that is it. There is not much more to this. Uh, like bead work, it looks really cool. It takes a while, but the technique is, is really straightforward and easy to learn if you're willing to like put in the effort of doing it. Um, I'd say uh, as, a, as a tip, um, you know, take the effort to work cleanly as always. Um, try to make sure that you are putting your chip work right up against the other pieces, like don't leave gaps. Um, kind of the same thing with, we'll, we'll get into this pearl pearl in just a minute, um, but make sure you're making it straight and then tying it down when it's straight. Like what you don't want is your gold work or you know beads essentially to look crooked or to look like there's like gaps between them. Um, so just careful with that, like part of, part of why this looks nice is because it's nice, smooth, swooping lines, and this is all nice and filled in. Whereas if I'd had like gaps here, or if this had like a kink in it or a bend, um, that would look very strange. Uh, but I, I think these two gold work techniques in particular are very user-friendly. Um, there's, there's more difficult ones that involve couching down your threads. Um, I think the cup work is probably something that's going to require a lot more practice and expertise. But again, beginner, that's why I picked these. Um, so if you're looking for a starting project, uh, I, I would definitely say look into Pearl Pearl and look into chip work. I think they'll give you a lot of bang for your buck. All right, I put this in like a dummy. I don't know why I did that. But yeah, uh, any other questions or projects that you guys have right now? Because otherwise, I'm just going to keep sewing little pieces of chip work down. I think I've made, how many of these have I made so far? Made six, six? Yeah, these are, this is my fifth and my sixth one of these. So then I have one more to go after this. I am being incredibly lazy. This, this is not a, a insanely time consuming thing. I just keep like putting it down and then picking it back up again. So I'm about to put it back down again in favor of swoopy stuff. Uh, so <laughs> don't expect this to be done anytime soon. Uh, so it says, I'd, li I'd like to practice gold work couching for Princess Daisy's dress. Yeah, couching, couching definitely looks like um, a, a more advanced technique. Uh, I, I decided I wanted to wait for another project to, to give that a try. But um, there's, there's so much, there's so much cool stuff that you can make with these. Um, so if you've if you've been itching to do it, I, I would say why not? It's fun. Really similar to beadwork. I find it very soothing. Which is surprising because I, I don't like hand sewing at all. Um, but I like beadwork and I like gold work quite a bit. Yeah, I can't I keep going back and forth on this. Like the, the dress, the dress needs to be done at some point. Um, but uh, 
meh. <laughs> I, I'm not, I'm definitely, at the very earliest I'm going to rewear it is going to be Katsukon. So I'm just like, God, it's so far away. And now I've got all these other projects I'm going to, I guess, do instead. Yeah, I don't, th I think a lot of people have had some trouble focusing, unfortunately, but, you know, dems the breaks. It is what it is. But Katsukon, if it happens, is only five months away. So like it's it's time. It, this is usually about when like the crunch needs to begin. Unless I want to make a grave mistake like I made last year and not didn't start bubblegum until uh, like halfway through December. And that was the worst possible thing. But my hands were tied with that. So it's not my fault. Uh, any tips for estimating how many how much supplies to buy for a project? Yeah, actually. Um, is it in here? It's either in here or it's in a different website. Actually, it's a different website. Um, I just have all these resources that are just on in my in Discord and I don't know them off the top of my head. But there is a doc. Um, that again, uh, Elven Bird, who knows everything, sent me, um, that gives you an estimate of, of how much of this that you need. Um, and so for, um, for this, for the Pearl Pearl, it's a bit easier because, you know, this is literally just laying along here. Um, and so the estimate is, is very roughly about you measure how long you want this to go and then you you add a little bit of extra um for the bright check the way you need to estimate it is how big the area you need to fill is um and so the calculator you you would get the volume of this or the area of this spot and then there's um a mathematical formula that they have to estimate that um, but that is another doc that I can send if you guys message me afterwards because I don't know it off the top of my head. Um, but uh, yeah, and uh, the calculator worked pretty well for me. I think I, I just went overboard because I was very afraid of not getting enough of it. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I definitely am not going to run out of this. I think I actually have just enough of, of this guy. Um, and then I, I just got a bunch of the other stuff because it was just, it, this, this imitation is absurdly cheap. So there's just no reason for it. Let's see. Ooh, what's a uh, tough tank? What, what project are you thinking? Is it, is it for the, is it for the gala or is it for something else? Uh, are we allowed to ask about other projects? Um, yeah, you can. Other projects I'm using gold work for. You're not, are you not using gold work on um, yeah. Cthulhu, are you? Okay, Scone is, Scone is, I do not have any gold work projects coming up, but um, aside from Bubblegum, but Scone is going to be using some gold work on her Cthulhu dress that she's making for the Cosplay Met Gala. Are you really? God dang. You've just got so much speed work going on with that thing. Yeah, I mean, I got to buy the rest of my fab where I can kind of look at. Oh, aren't you also going to use gold work on Naringa? Oh, yeah, I'm definitely going to do it on Naringa. Yeah, well, so there's a Tree of Savior design that's like. Sure if I'm doing it on yeah, there's a, there's a Tree of Savior design that's in the works at some point. Probably not for this Katsu at this point. But that one. Uh, We'll also have some gold work incorporated into it. Mm, that's nice. I have an idea for a, a beaded jewel project thing too, but it's uh, again, you know, when am I gonna do it? I don't know. Maybe sue it, it's kind of swoopy, so. It'd be a good Halloween kind of thing. 
didn't make any swoopy stuff last year. And this year I have like three different projects. But uh, yeah, my only other thing, things aside from this, don't really make sense for gold work, I think. Um, one's a bunch of high Q armor, one is um, uh, a Met Gala dress, and then the other is this. I wanna add some more. I liked it, but I think adding some accents like this will give it a bit of a pop. All right, what time are we at? So we're, we're actually almost at the end of this session. So real fast, um, I'm just gonna demo for you guys how to stitch down the pearl pearl before we go. After I tie this off. Okay. So, uh, that was the bright check for stitching down the pearl pearl. It's actually even faster, in my opinion. Um, in this case, I only do a single piece of thread um, because this stuff is pretty smooth. I don't think it has a lot of problems. Um, I'm gonna do this along right here. So let me tie down my thread to start. Okay. So for the pearl pearl, again, this is a twisted wire. And when we stretch it very slightly, we're going to put a little bit more space between those twists. So you know, if this looks like a strand of pearls or beads, we're going to make it a slightly more stretched out strand. And the reason for that is that we're going to be whips, essentially whip stitching this down to our fabric. And we don't want the thread to lay on top of the pearl or that's ugly and then we can see it. We instead want the thread to fall between the pearls and then be completely hidden from view. So like if we look at the finished piece, see how you cannot, uh, see how we cannot focus, but focus. Here. There we go. You see how you cannot see any thread whatsoever. And that's because it's tucked right in between all of the little pearls. And that's exactly what we want. Oh, actually here, we can see the chip work a lot better. It's suddenly focusing for me, thank you. So here's a really up close view. Um, there's a slight size difference between the two pearl colors. You see how the gold is a little bit smaller, um, whereas this one pops a little more. Um, I think the gold is a number one size pearl pearl, and this is a number two. I like the two a lot personally. Um, but yeah, you can, you can see the difference between them. It just looks like a really cool little row of beads, but we don't want any of that visible thread. Um, so that's why you need to stretch it a tiny bit before you get started. And then what I usually do is I will lay 
my piece of pearl pearl down where I want it to go. And again, we're whip stitching. So the thread is on this side. The thread is on this side and we're going to go around onto this side and pin this down into place. So we want to get pretty tight. Be a little careful here. Um, see how I actually moved this down? Oh, you can't see that very well. There we go. All right, perfect. So when I tighten this, I'm going to tighten it so that it falls between the two little pearls that I want. Oh my God, come on. Getting it started is always the hardest. Here. There we go. And you see how you can't see that any longer? It just popped down between them. And now, woo, stuck into place. So usually when I start on a piece, I will then go to the next or maybe the one after, the gap afterwards and also secure that down. Um, I, I secure it a little more at the edge of the pearl pearl because um, it's a little more fiddly there. But then in the middle, you can skip more gaps. Um, and I'll skip like several millimeters at a time if it feels very secure. Um, so now I have skipped from here to here. I'm still holding this pearl pearl in the direction I want it to go. And then pinning it down. Um, the, a big thing you want to bear in mind is don't, like let's, I'm gonna be really exaggerated here. Um, let's say I go up right here and now I need to come down. Um, remember this thread needs to fit between where the pearl pearl gap is. So, you know, if I go across where the gap is, it's going to be something like this in this direction. If I was to do something wacky and like put my thread, my needle down, like instead of here, go, oh, way down here. How's that going to fit between, between the gap? It's, it's not. It's going to just sit right on top of that. And there's nothing you can, there's no way you'll make that work. So just be careful and try not to get too off kilter. Just kind of bear in mind where that gap is and where your thread needs to fit. And there you go. Also, um, always remember to stretch it beforehand. Uh, if it's unstretched, it's probably not going to be loose enough for the threads to fit down between the gaps. Um, when I've accidentally done that, uh, if you try and force it down too hard, it's gonna bend the pearl, unfortunately, and look really bad. Um, so just be careful. There we go. But yeah, this is this is a very this in particular is quite fast. This is even faster than chip work, which is also pretty fast in my opinion. Um, so Pro Pro is very beginner friendly, and I think in like absolutely no time at all, if we had more time this session we would get this going all the way up here um this is very very straightforward i think but uh pearl pearl is really fun i like using it a lot uh and i think we are actually at the end of time believe it or not uh so before we go does anyone have any questions about this stuff Oh, you're welcome. Yeah, I've been, um, I'm, I'm probably gonna do a video, a very short like calm cosplay video on this as well. Um, because again, this is like all I've been doing lately. <laughs> so we'll, we'll see. Um, but yeah, this is, this is super fun. I highly recommend giving it a try, especially if you already know that you like beadwork. 
yeah, it's really, it's really fancy, especially the chip work. It's just like, it's a lot. There's a lot going on. Um, and it's very, very, very shiny. Super fun. But yeah, definitely recommend it. Um, but yeah, thank you guys for coming. Um, I think who's who's up next? I think Sophie's up next, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, Sophie's up next. She's gonna be doing 3D printing on fabric. Yeah. Um, but if you guys want to find more of our stuff and, and our work, uh, again, we're on Cowbot Crunchies on all the Instagrams except for Twitter, which is Cowbot Crunchy. Um, uh, we have a new YouTube channel, Cowbot Crunchies, which is where this video will eventually be going um, once, I, once I make that. Uh, and you can also find us on Patreon and I have a book too if anyone wants some uh, extreme wig styling tips. Uh, you can find that on our site as well. But thank you guys so much for coming. Um, and if you need the names of any of those resources that I could not remember off the top of my head, uh, just PM me and I will send them your way. Thank you guys. All right. Um, thanks to both of you, because I, I have a feeling that um, even if I don't see her, Scone is somewhere nearby. Yeah, she's around. <laughs> yeah. So um, thank you both. Um, it was nice seeing you guys here. I'm looking forward to seeing you, obviously, again in the future. Thank you. You too. Awesome. So. Um, okay, everyone, we're going to take another quick break while I set up the next one. And um, thanks.